you follow me on Twitter, you'll know that I love Batman. And today, we're going to be starting a new series of videos called Can Batman. The idea is very similar to a versus battle, only there's a lot more that will go into these than just can Batman beat somebody up. The question is, can he solve the case? Can he save the people? Can he solve the issue? Just to clarify, we're also more so talking about how a story or how this situation would play out if Batman was involved in it. We're not exactly discussing how Batman would win feet-wise. We're more talking from a storytelling perspective. How would Batman go about solving this problem if he would give him the task? So we're not exactly going to be power scaling him today. So, taking that in mind, let's jump into the first episode of Can Batman, Can Batman Defeat Voldemort? So Batman is sitting in the Batcave, and suddenly a portal opens, and Dumbledore walks through the portal, and ask Batman to help deal with Voldemort. And he gives Batman a very basic breakdown of the situation involving Voldemort and explains that Voldemort had recently been resurrected. It's a very basic rundown of what Harry would know at this point. So it's a little bit of Voldemort's backstory, his real name being Tom Riddle, and mostly everything that has happened to Harry and his friends since they started Hogwarts four years ago. Their fifth year at Hogwarts is beginning at the moment, and Batman had been recruited to help deal with the threat of Voldemort. The portal is a two-way gateway between the Batcave and the Forbidden Forest. Said portal will remain open at all times, and all Batman communication technology can travel from the, the Harry Potter universe through the portal into the DC universe. Sound can also transfer from one side of the portal to the other. I'm doing this because I want to give Batman access to all the same resources he would have when working on a case in Gotham while working on this case. I simply don't think it would be fair to answer this question if we didn't give Batman all the tools in his toolbox. Well, I actually need to take that back. That's not entirely true. We are imposing some basic restrictions onto Batman. Number one, no Justice League combating suits. He can use basic technology, he can use it in some of his contingencies, but no pulling out the Justice Buster. The Justice Buster is a piece of technology designed to fight Superman, which would make this a cakewalk for him. Secondly, while he can call on help in a support-like fashion for members of the Bat family, such as asking them to do investigation or look things up online with Oracle, he is not allowed to call any of them to help in combat in the field. They can only assist in the detective aspect of the investigation. He is also not allowed to ask for help from any of the magic users of the DC Universe, so no calling up reality-alterating Dr. Fate or Zatanna, who frankly should be able to do anything. And most importantly, and most unsurprisingly, he can't ask for any physical assistance from Superman or any member of the Justice League. He is not allowed to ask for Superman to come in and help him solve this problem like he has on a few minor occasions in his own book. Even if things are so desperate that it is a situation where Batman would normally summon the Justice League for assistance, he is not allowed to. If a plane is about to crash into a building, Batman needs to stop it himself. No calling Superman or Wonder Woman. However, I will let him use resources that he can gain access to through his connection to Superman and other members of the Justice League. And probably the one that will cause the biggest problem for him in this case, Batman is fully in character. Meaning he cannot use any methods he wouldn't use in canon, which also means Voldemort is not allowed to be killed. And any extreme forms of torture that Batman could employ if his morals were off are off the table as well. Also, we are going to say that Batman's equipment will all work totally fine at Hogwarts because I'm pretty sure any kind of effect magic would have on technology, Batman had probably already gotten around because he would be paranoid about Zatanna going rogue or something. So now that we've done all that, let's get into it. The first thing Batman is going to do before anything is probably scope out Hogwarts, which is really simple for him, with a combination of drones and, of course, his ability to sneak around. I don't think he'll have any problems infiltrating Hogwarts and just sneaking around, which I don't think Dumbledore will approve of at all. I actually think throughout the scenario, Dumbledore is going to become more disenfranchised with Batman. But knowing Batman, the first thing he could have wanted to get straight up information from the victims. And I think the people he'll probably go to first are Harry, Ron, and Hermione, who have had the most involvement with Voldemort over the years. So, he'll probably go to them at night, because he's not just going to show himself to the entire school. It won't be hard for him to sneak into the boys' dorms of Gryffindor, 
grab Harry and Ron, scare them into coming out and coming with him, and then he'll just go do the thing with Hermione. And I don't really think the enchantment on the girl's door will be a problem for Batman, because Batman's not going up the stairs like a regular person. He's probably gonna break into her window, sneak up to her bed, and tell her to get outside right now and do as he said. And listen, Harry, Ron, and Hermione are brave kids, but Batman is a crazy person who is like six foot, dressed in a bat costume, and is like built like a Greek god. They're gonna be terrified. In fact, while Harry and Hermione are probably smart enough, and especially because they were raised in the muggle world, to figure out that Batman is a dude in a costume with like light up glasses, Ron may legitimately believe Batman is a monster because he has white glowing eyes. As I said, Hermione and Harry are smart enough to figure out it's probably just lights powered by electricity. But Ron? Ron's probably gonna think Batman's an actual demon. So he'll probably quickly explain that he's there to help stop Voldemort and calm down. They are children, so Batman won't want to scare them too much. He may even apologize for scaring them, but just saying he needed to get them outside. He'll then just ask and confirm a lot of the things Dumbledore told him about, ask for more details, probably really focus on the Chamber of Secrets stuff, because he's gonna think that is really weird. I'm sure the moment he mentioned a physical manifestation of Voldemort's memory, Batman's gonna start figuring out something about the Horcrux thing right there. At the very least, he's going to start figuring out that objects may be involved in Voldemort's immortality in some way. He's probably going to focus most on talking to Hermione, simply because he'll quickly deduce she's the most intelligent person there, and Batman doesn't typically take time to talk to people that he doesn't think have the most reliable intelligence of information. Because a lot of Batman questions are probably going to be very specific and very detailed, and I don't honestly think Ron and Harry will have the answer for him. I think what you would see a lot of is Hermione playing translator and trying to get the information out of Harry to give it back to Batman, because I think he's going to be asking a lot of very detailed questions, specifically about the stuff involving the Chamber of Secrets, as I said earlier. I think he'll be very interested in what kind of body Tom Riddle had. Did he bleed? Did he sweat? Did he show signs of exhaustion? Austin, he's probably gonna be asking things like, do you have any DNA samples? Do you have anything I can examine? I want to see the crime scene. Batman's gonna go in incredible detail here, and I really think his takeaway would be that the memory of Tom Riddle was a physical construct. It seemed to have been alive. However, it didn't seem to have a flesh and blood body, and when it was destroyed, a corpse was not left behind. It was kind of just a magical explosion. So he will quickly realize that somehow Harry and Voldemort's magic are linked, and that Tom Riddle, the memory of him in the diary, was a manifestation of his teenage self that was connected to the diary. He'll also quickly realize that this means that the diary was anchoring that part of his soul, that manifestation of his will, to the mortal world. At this point, he would probably realize Dumbledore was hiding things from him and not telling him everything. If Dumbledore does have a tendency to do that, to hide things, to keep secrets, so I do think at this point, he would realize he was being lied to, which would likely make him freak out and go after Dumbledore, where I think he would immediately break into the headmaster's office and get the information out of Dumbledore. Now, there's a hundred ways Batman could get the information out of Dumbledore, Dumbledore. He's a master of interrogation. The first thing Batman is obviously probably going to do is try to scare him. If that doesn't work, I'm sure Batman is threatening one of the students and makes a bogus claim and how there's a bomb in one of them. He had weird like magic detector set to Dumbledore's magic specifically that if Dumbledore casts the spell will cause the bomb to go up and kill the kid. Which is literally what he did the first time he met Superman in post crisis continuity. He just tricked Superman into thinking that if Superman attacked him or tried to arrest him, a kid would die. Of course, what Dumbledore and Superman at the time didn't know is that the bomb is actually on Bruce. Bruce Wayne will be the person to die. But Batman is not above threatening innocent people in an attempt to get more powerful characters to fall in line. I also do want to briefly talk about the fact that Voldemort and Dumbledore, despite being incredibly powerful, are still regular human beings physically meaning the reaction time is much more accurate to that of the regular human, while Batman has on occasion reacted to attacks from Superman and Barry Allen. He has shown the ability to mentally and physically react to them. He's never outspeeded them, obviously, they're way faster than him, but he has shown the ability to understand and react to them before, and if he can react even mentally to Superman or Barry, he can avoid anything Dumbledore, Voldemort, or any wizard can throw at him. Reminder that Superman is 
almost a million times faster than the speed of light. And Barry Allen can run so fast that he can turn back time. Mind you, Superman is comparable to Barry Allen and the other speedsters. So he would probably be able to get the information about the prophecy out of Dumbledore. In which case, there's somebody who works at the Ministry in the building. Who would be able to get him into the room with that whole the prophecy, of course. Now, this is where he probably runs into the first person he actually needs to Batman up like he would a criminal. Because immediately upon breaking into Umbridge's office, Batman is going to notice a few things. One, that Umbridge, upon waking up and speaking to him for even a couple of seconds, he is going to realize that she is a very sick, twisted woman, which will probably let him figure out that it is highly possible that she is the reason he had seen multiple students at the school while sneaking around the dorms that Harry, Ron, and Hermione were in have hand injuries. I'm sure Batman will at least deduce that, and upon asking her once, she'll probably show a slight hint of fear, which will be all Batman needs to begin a very painful investigation. It's important to note that Batman is operating at Hogwarts entirely at night. He isn't operating during the day. In the day, he's probably going back to the Batcave. So everyone that he's interrogated so far, he's waking up at night and forcibly interrogating them when they're probably like half asleep. So this is an umbrage who are probably really out of source because she just woke up. Now Batman's attention has shifted to the fact that he has a woman that is physically assaulting children. So Umbridge is in for a really rough night. Batman probably gonna be her bloody. She, she's probably gonna be in a full body cast for a few months. Now Batman has realized this was a dead end and this monster isn't going to help him. So now Batman's just gonna break into the Ministry of Magic. Now he's at a bit of a disadvantage since he's alienated Dumbledore and he's alienated Harry, Ron, and Hermione and he's alienated the Ministry but he gets all the information he needs. First of all, he can probably get the information about the location of the phone booth needed to enter the Ministry from a bridge pretty easily. Batman's really good at that stuff. But he probably wouldn't think to ask about the magic code you put in the phone. So, this is where the Bat Family comes in. This would be the point where I think Batman would reach up to a communicator and contact Oracle and ask her to locate this exact phone booth in London. And then he would most likely ask her to send the information to the Bat Way was he would go get and fly through the portal from the Batcave and then fly to London, hop down, and find the telephone booth. Now, this is where things get tricky because Batman is immediately going to realize this is a normal telephone booth, but it won't take him long to figure out that there's probably some sort of magic password. At this point, Batman would probably deduce that it may involve spelling out the word magic using numbers like on an old cell phone. If you have all the information at hand, it's not hard to figure it out, especially when you figured out way more complex things with way less information to go off of. Now, once again, getting in there and sneaking into the Department of Secrets and stealing the prophecy, not going to be a problem for Batman. Now we run into the real problem here because Batman can't do this quietly. So, as soon as he uses the prophecy, he'll hear it and we'll run into two problems. One, law enforcement is gonna show up and probably attack him. And two, Batman is now confronted with the fact that the prophecy involved one of these people dying. While most of the prophecy won't mean much to Batman, this particular part will. And either must die at the hand of the other, for neither can live while the other survives. At this point, I think Batman will realize what Dumbledore had actually meant when he said help him stop Voldemort. That Dumbledore wanted to help them kill him. In which case, Batman is now against everybody in this universe. Batman now has to actively work to save Voldemort and save Harry and arrest Voldemort. At this point, the law enforcement would arrive and Batman will do his thing. I don't think any wizards besides for Dumbledore and Voldemort are even a threat to him. This is very much like fighting off the GCPD. Something I don't think Batman actually wants to do. If these are genuinely members of law enforcement, Batman doesn't like hurting those guys. Those are good people who have very similar beliefs that he does. And luckily for Batman, wands are made of wood which a Batarang can cut through. So I think we would probably just see him throw some Batarang, knock wands out of a few hands, maybe cut a couple in half, throw down a smoke bomb, go around and probably just knock them all unconscious and leave. Batman oddly isn't going to kill any of these people. And he also obviously doesn't really want to injure them because they're members of law enforcement. Now, Batman would in fact know about Death Eater. So it's at this point where Batman would come to the conclusion that what he needs to do is locate a Death Eater and get information that could help him figure out where Voldemort is. 
because if anybody knows where he is, it's probably one of his lackeys. The problem is, Batman had cut himself off from Dumbledore, Hogwarts, and the Ministry, so he actually doesn't have any resources of people he can just straight up ask for identities of Death Eater. However, since he did get a basic background on Hogwarts, and he does know who Salazar Slytherin is, it wouldn't take much to find out with a little help. But Dumbledore can also not be trusted, so I do think Batman would send two members of the Bat family to go and sneak into Hogwarts and get information on Salazar Slytherin. He would most likely send Stephanie and Tim Drake, I think, just because Stephanie can go with Tim as backup, and Tim Drake is the best detective in the Bat family next to him. While they do that, Batman would return to the Batcave and probably start thinking about how he will avoid the real issue here, which is that the prophecy implies that one of the two needs to die, which is of course unacceptable. This is also when he would probably start going over information involving immortality, and how physical objects could play into such a situation. It's also at this point when he would probably do that based on Harry's behavior when they met, that he is unaware of the prophecy. It could probably annoy him more, but eventually Stephanie and Tim would return and give him the information they uncovered about Salazar and the House of Slytherin, and it would be at this moment that Batman would realize that there's probably a lot of kids in Slytherin that have Death Eater parents, that the information Tim and Stephanie got can be trusted, and now he can act on it. It's at this point, I think he would go back and sneak out Hermione under the guise of Bruce Wayne dressed as a wizard. In fact, it would actually be pretty funny if he actually knew to common alias Matthew Malone while wearing the wizard costume. He's obviously not going to introduce himself as Batman and Bruce Wayne to Hermione. He's not going to do that. Why Hermione and not Ron or Harry? Batman is a very critical guy. Just ask spoiler, Stephanie Brown, who I mentioned earlier. Stephanie was literally fired for saving his life because it went against his orders. That's literally how Stephanie's tenure at Robin ended. She saved his life and got fired for it. He's incredibly critical, and I honestly don't think Ron or Harry is motivated or responsible enough for Bruce to trust. I'm not even saying he would trust Hermione. I'm just saying he would trust her slightly more than he trusts two irresponsible teenage boys. And he's probably not going to trust her too much either. Batman barely trusts his best friend who had the nicest man in Toon Universe. This is the man who had drugged members of his own team before but he doesn't trust them. She put an augmented reality chip inside of Wonder Woman's brain. And it's heavily implied he did that while kissing her. So I think it's safe to say two irresponsible teenagers who don't even take their schoolwork seriously aren't going to be high up there on his list of people he can trust. Hermione, on the other hand, presents herself as very put together and very capable and intelligent and responsible. And I think Batman, especially the intelligent part, will actually respect that. I think out of all three of them, Hermione would probably remind him the most of the kind of people that he had working under his wing in the Bat family, such as many of his children who are incredibly dedicated and people he can trust. But he would probably go to her. She would probably actually figure out Magic Malone and Batman because he's some strange adult showing up at Hogwarts like the day after some crazy man in a Bat costume threatened them at night. I think he would obviously try to like calm her down because Batman knows he's scary. He'd probably just be like, listen, I'm looking into defeating Voldemort. I need some information. I just need some people that may or may not be Death Eater. And I think Hermione would then say, well, Draco Malfoy's father, Lucius Malfoy, is a Death Eater. And he would be like, thank you, Massive Malone, out. Good kid, and he would leave. Another reason he would probably ask Hermione is because Hermione seems more mature than Harry and Ron. Therefore, she may give him accurate information. Teenagers do have a tendency to make things up and believe things that aren't true, especially about people they don't like, which can often happen with classmates. So Hermione's probably the best source for this information, because she's probably not making it up because she doesn't like some boy in another class. So now he talked to Hermione briefly, he got a name, now Batman would go and immediately have to find Lucius Malfoy's house at Manor, Malfoy Manor, which isn't probably too hard to do. Once again, he can kind of just walk around in his Magic Malone persona and find out. He could even get the information from Draco if he really wanted to, and they want to scare another child. But I actually don't think Bruce would do that, considering the fact that Draco probably comes from a broken home, and he probably doesn't want to mess with him because, you know, it's really sad. His father's actually a terrorist. 
So, Brute won't want to mess with him, especially because a lot of the Robins, particularly Stephanie and Jason, come from broken homes. Hell, his daughter Cassandra is literally the daughter of two supervillains. So, Bruce has experience with those kind of kids, which would actually possibly make him more sympathetic to somebody like Draco. But with the wizarding version of Matt just Malone on his side, I don't think Bruce is gonna have any trouble finding out where the Malfoys live. It's probably common knowledge, honestly. And as far as I understand, that's where Voldemort is staying at this point in time. So it's at this point where we will probably start figuring out a lot of what Batman will be doing. He'll go to Lucius Malfoy's house, or Malfoy Manor, he'll break in, and he'll beat the crap out of Lucius and get all the information he needs. After speaking with Malfoy and learning Voldemort is at the manor, I actually think Batman would leave. Because I don't think Batman wants to go after Voldemort yet, because he doesn't know how to get around the killing mark. However, I do think upon talking to Lucius, and he would probably ask Lucius about the diary, be like, where did you get the diary? What is it? And he would probably just beat him senseless. And I feel like at that point, Lucius would probably say, I don't know, I didn't know it contained part of his soul. And if Lucius words it in a way like that, I think Batman would finally have his light bulb moment where he'd like, he put his soul into objects. So this is the moment where he would probably go back to Hogwarts and just go to Dumbledore and be like, so I think he put his soul into objects. Because the Lucius using that kind of terminology would probably confirm to Batman that that's something that wizards at least consider doable. Like, it's something... The terminology of fusing your soul into an object exists in this universe as well. Voldemort would immediately realize that none of the beef with Batman matters at this point because that's really serious. That would be really bad. And he would probably explain Horcruxes to Batman. I think Batman would really shock Dumbledore here when he reveals that it's actually making their job a lot easier. And Dumbledore would argue they need to find out where the Horcruxes are and destroy them. And I think this is the point when Batman would be like, why do we need to do that? It's not like we're gonna kill Voldemort. It's at this point that Batman would explain that he doesn't kill people and he's not gonna let Voldemort die. He's not gonna let Harry die either, and blah, blah, blah. And he would probably just tell Dumbledore he had the plan. It's at this point that I think Batman would finally start to figure out what he needs to do. Simply put, Voldemort is supposedly an incredibly powerful wizard. He can't really be held because as far as he is aware, he doesn't know how to negate the magic of this universe. So, he's in a pretty tough position, he can't just arrest someone like Voldemort and put them in Arkham Asylum, but he also can't kill him even if he wanted to, which is also already off the table. But, Batman has a way around this problem, and I think this would be the point, when Batman would go and say, listen, I have a plan, I'm gonna go to Malfoy Manor and take down Voldemort. He would also probably be followed there by Dumbledore, and then also probably by Ron, Harry, and Hermione, who are probably sticking their nose into people's business, when they shouldn't be, as they do throughout the entire series. Dumbledore is probably going just to make sure Batman doesn't get himself killed, because he's probably still underestimating him. Batman would go, followed by Dumbledore, Ron, Harry, and Hermione, who Dumbledore would probably not be happy came either, but they would go, Batman would immediately break out into just defeating everybody in his wake. We would probably get to finally see Batman really fight, against the Death Eaters, because the Death Eaters are the only people he really wanted to hurt that can fight back so far in this scenario. I think Batman isn't stupid enough to think he can take on an entire manor filled with Death Eaters easily, but he's also not stupid enough to fight them in a one-on-one -on -one fight. I think he would sneak in and through the top ceiling, very Arkham style, would throw down a lot of knockout gas, and then you smoke bomb, jump down, knock people unconscious, steal their wand, cut one to half, grab them, and snap them. He'd also probably go for arms, try to break a lot of people's arms. See, if they don't have their arms, they can't use magic. While Batman took out the Death Eaters, I think we would probably see Dumbledore and Voldemort clash slightly, where by the time Batman had taken out the Death Eaters, he would probably just swoop in and like throw a battering into Voldemort's eyes. Because this is the thing, Batman has got a massive advantage here against Voldemort. He would just swoop in and say, Dumbledore, stand the die. Because Batman is at a massive advantage because he is fighting a regular human being who can't die. Normally, when Batman is fighting an enhanced individual, they are enhanced. So he has to worry about them killing him. Because they're typically enhanced, or they're like Wonder Woman or Superman. But in this case, Voldemort's just a guy with a magic wand in a regular body that just happens to not die if the body is heavily damaged. But if it's destroyed, his soul will still remain. So now, Batman can just have fun with it. I can imagine him almost being a little excited that he gets to cut loose a little bit. 
So Batman would probably do things like he's dueling with Voldemort, suddenly Batarang knocks his eyeball out, he'll go, he'll kick him in the face, he'll like snap his arms, he'll break his spine, he'll just beat this man senseless. Because there's no consequence to what he's doing. He can just have fun and go full all out with everything all his mentors taught him. Once again, Batman basically gets to be bloodlusted now because he realizes he can't kill Voldemort. As long as he doesn't destroy his body physically, he should be fine. Dumbledore and Harry, Ron, and Hermione will all be there. The kids will arrive after the battle and be stunned to see Voldemort on the ground probably paralyzed from his broken spine. But the Death Eaters are starting to encroach on them and they still have a small problem. How could they possibly handle this? The Death Eaters are gonna show up, more of them will come, and Voldemort can't die, so they can't kill him. I can see Dumbledore and Harry being like, time to kill him right now, we gotta kill this guy. It's at this point that Batman would reveal his plan, which is, going back to the very beginning of the video where I set the rules, to ask for help from an Urban Justice League, in which he would say, Superman, you can come over now. Superman would fly in, swoop down, because he can hear him from the other side of the portal, because he's Superman, would swoop in with the Phantom Zone projector. And now Batman has the biggest problem he's encountered so far, which is Superman's morality, of, of course. Of course that's the biggest problem Batman needs to deal with. His stupid Boy Scout of a friend. Because while I said Batman can't ask the Justice League for help and they can't help him, I never said they had to help him either. They're not compelled to. And in character, I honestly don't think Superman would be okay with putting Voldemort in the Phantom Zone to get a regular human being. The Phantom Zone is typically reserved for Superman level enemies. For monsters like Izzad and Doomsday. People that can give Superman a run for his money. I don't know how he would feel about putting this old man in a weird body in the Phantom Zone after Batman just broke all his bones and broke his spine. He would honestly probably have more of an issue with the fact that Batman brutalized him in such a way. In which case, I think Superman may say, no, I'm not letting you put him in the Phantom Zone. In which case, I never said Superman and Batman couldn't fight. It's at this point that Batman would probably rip out his kryptonite wing, punch Superman in the face, send him back, throw like a kryptonite smoke bomb at him, grab the Phantom Zone projector as he flies backwards, grab it, turn around, blast Voldemort with it, send him to the Phantom Zone, turn around and look at Clark, and probably just say something along the lines of, this had to be done, Clark. There was no thing in the universe that could contain him, and then I could see Superman just getting up and just being like, damn it, Bruce. Superman just gonna be really annoyed of course, Dumbledore and the Golden Trio, or whatever you want to call them, the kids, are just going to be horrified because this flying man who can seemingly do anything just showed up and that bitch just punched him in the face. Like, it's at this moment they realize what a bad guy they've been dealing with and how lucky they've actually gotten so far. So Batman, I think, will just look at Clark. They'll probably just stare at each other. Clark would just be annoyed and say, whatever, I'm going home. He would grab his Phantom Zone projector and he would leave. Batman would look at Dumbledore and say, I'm leaving too, I have to get back to Gotham. And Batman would leave. And yeah, that's how I think Batman could, in theory, defeat Voldemort. However, I think this was really fun to make. It's really just a fun what if, like what if Batman had to take down this fictional problem? Or what if Batman had to take down this villain or tackle this problem? It's just a fun video to make. I had a lot of fun making this. I also think it's very different from the what-if battle because I get to include various characters and talk about their interactions and how they get along. And I had a, really, a lot of fun doing this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Tell me your thoughts on how you think Batman would go about tackling the Voldemort problem in the comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more videos like this one. And above all else, guys, have a fantastic day. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my PayPal, which is linked in the description box down below. And most of all, this is Nerd King 101 signing out.